Every now and then, guys post pocket dumb pictures of their everyday carry gear over on the Just Blue Fish Watch Club Facebook group. And it's always kind of cool to see what people carry with them on a daily basis, but oftentimes, I'm actually a little surprised at what I see missing. What's up, everybody? I'm Guy, and today we are looking at 10 of my essential everyday carry items. And this isn't an exhaustive list of every single item a person could or should have on them in case of something like an emergency. This video will include a selection of what I think are some of the most important and sometimes overlooked items that you need to have on you. But they are for making daily life a little bit easier and maybe helping out in a serious situation. Let's start with the obvious first choice. And this is primarily a watch review channel. So you knew it was coming. Yes, of course, we're talking about a wristwatch. Guys that are into watch collecting, they already know why having a dedicated timepiece is an awesome thing to have on you at all times. But I'm sure there's gonna be people that look at a wristwatch as something of an inconvenience, especially in a day and age where we always have a cell phone on our person. Sure, in a lot of ways, the cell phone has superseded the need for a dedicated wristwatch. However, phones do run out of power. Glancing down at your watch is frankly more convenient than pulling out your phone. And let's be honest, there's just something really enjoyable about owning, collecting, and wearing wristwatches. Whether it's a modest $50 Casio G-Shock or something fairly expensive like a Rolex Submariner. These are two of my favorite watches from my collection of about a half a dozen or so watches and they get the overwhelming majority of my wrist time. They have a lot of commonalities between them and it's why I gravitate towards them. Both are fairly tough and durable, and obviously the Casio being much more so, and both have multiple functions aside from just telling the time. I like a watch that has the ability to track a date, and both of these also have timing functions, like the elapsed time bezel on the Submariner and the dedicated chronograph on the Casio. Another big benefit, unlike most phones, is that these watches are highly water resistant, so that's one less thing to worry about. Yeah, a good quality wristwatch, that doesn't necessarily mean expensive, is going to be my number one EDC item that you should have. My second item on the list is one that a lot of people, I find, don't emphasize the importance of enough. And that's, of course, a flashlight. I know, cell phones again, they have a flashlight function now, but honestly, that's not a good reason for not having a dedicated flashlight. These Streamlight brand flashlights are two that I really like and I've owned them for years. They're compact, they run off a single or a pair of AA batteries, depending on the model. They are much brighter than your cell phone flashlight and using them doesn't deplete the power of your cell phone. Most of the time, it's just convenient to have a flashlight. Say you drop your keys in a dark parking lot or you're navigating out of a poorly lit movie theater towards the bathroom at a late night show. And yeah, for 15 seconds, a cell phone light will work, but there might come a situation where you need your flashlight for an hour or more. And at times like that, I'm going to guess that none of us wanna be completely draining the batteries of our cell phones. Now, hopefully we never find ourselves trapped in a no electricity lights out situation for long periods of time, but having a charged up and capable flashlight just in case is a really good idea. And training yourself to use that instead of your cell phone right now might prepare you for the moment when it does really matter. The third thing that you should have on you, if it's legally allowed where you live, is a good blade, or in my opinion, better yet, a multi-tool. Now I'll say that I have owned some good folding knives over the years from brands like Benchmade, Spyderco, Sog, and Frankly, I've stopped carrying a dedicated knife, and I'm now more in favor of having a multi-tool or a folding knife at least that has more options. Now, usually I'm carrying this Leatherman multi-tool, the model being the Wingman, and why I choose this is for both the tools that it delivers, which includes a blade, pliers, scissors, screwdrivers, a pry bar, and because it is relatively lightweight, but still very strong, and it has a built-in clip so that it can be worn on the inside of a pocket and it doesn't fall out. Now, if I need something even smaller, I'll go with this Victorinox Swiss Army Tinker model. You lose a lot of the functionality, but it still has the main tools that I'd most likely need in a pinch. And when size and weight really matters, like let's say I'm wearing dress pants or something a bit more formal, this is easy to drop in the pocket. Now, I know some people are gonna say, but those aren't fighting knives. You can't defend yourself with those. And that's 
kind of true. They're not ideal for that. But I've come to the conclusion that I don't need a fighting knife. First, I don't know how to fight with a knife. And second, if I'm being attacked and I think that the only way I'm gonna survive the situation is by using lethal force, a knife is not going to be my first choice. That's what a firearm is for. Fourth on the list of EDC items that you should have on you is cordage. And in this case, I suggest something as simple as these 550 cord Cobra wrapped bracelets or maybe keychains. I made both of these and it is super easy to do. And in a pinch, when you unwound them, they'll give you between six and eight feet of cordage. The uses for paracord is endless, from lashing things together to make a more manageable bundle to temporarily serving as a broken boot or shoelace. Not to mention some of the potential life-saving uses like making an emergency tourniquet. So considering the size and weight, I think it's really worth having several feet of this on your person. Number five is an item that you almost certainly already have on you. Uh, but the question is, is it really the best choice? What we're talking about here is of course a good wallet. And I think one that has an RFID blocking liner is ideal. Identity theft is growing every day and protecting your cards from getting scanned is super easy with the right wallet. Now what's inside your wallet also really matters. And far too often I see people walking around with absolutely no cash. Look, I'm not gonna say that you need to have several hundred dollars on you, but having a couple of 20s in your wallet at all times is a really good idea. The last thing that you need is to have to get a tank of gas in order to get home and there's no way to pay for it. Like there's a problem with the credit card processing machine that uh, the gas station's using, for example. Always have a handful of 20s in your wallet if possible. This is the wallet that I use and it's actually one that I reviewed here on the channel years ago. Core Essentials is a brand that gave me some of their products to review and I was so impressed with it that I have used it every day since. That said, this video isn't sponsored. I haven't talked to those guys over there in years, but I do still use the wallet they gave me and I really do like it. The sixth EDC item I suggest that you always have on you is a way to make fire, a simple lighter being the obvious choice. And I fully expect to hear people say, I've gone my whole life and I have never needed a lighter. And especially if you're not a smoker, I wouldn't be surprised by that. However, without a lighter or matches or a fire starter or some sort of fire making device, it is probably one of the hardest things that you will ever have to do is to make a fire by hand and if you're in a scenario where you need fire, it could be the difference between life and death. A lot of us carry a backpack or a laptop bag, and this is just something that I highly recommend you toss in the bag and always have it with you, just in case. If you're stranded somewhere and you need warmth, you'll be happy that you have it. And if you find yourself lost, hoping for rescue, they say that one of the best things to do is to say, absolutely put and make yourself visible. Controlled burn with a lot of smoke is one of the best ways to make yourself visible. My seventh EDC item that I never leave the house without is actually hand sanitizer. And I have of course seen people argue that hand sanitizer really isn't all that effective. I can't back up the science behind it other than to say that I always have a bottle on me and the first thing I do when I'm leaving a public setting is sanitize my hands with it. And luckily, I rarely get sick. Call me a germaphobe if you want, but getting sick is one of my least favorite things in life. And when I'm in my car after leaving, I don't know, the bank or a doctor's office or a store, and I can't wash my hands with proper soap and water, I am absolutely using this and hoping for the best. Now, alternatively, in conjunction with your lighter, it actually makes a pretty good fire starting fuel source. You can mix a little bit of it up with your tinder and even in damp and unfavorable conditions, you'll have a much better chance of getting a fire started. The eighth thing that I think you should have as part of your EDC kit is a pen and a notepad and even something as simple as one of these small pocket notepads. And yet again, people are gonna say the cell phone and sure it's depreciated the value of a pen and paper, but there are times when being able to write a message on paper does come in handy. And this is another one of those things that you can carry in your backpack or laptop bag off body it's not necessarily something that you gotta have in your pocket at all times. That said, will it get a lot of use? Maybe not, but if you go somewhere and you need to leave a message for someone, or I don't know, just feel like writing down the name of your favorite YouTube channel over and over, this just might come in handy. Not to mention that dry paper makes for better tinder than wet grass should you ever have to build a fire. The number nine item on the list of EDC items that I think you should have with you at all times is, of course, your phone, but also a way to charge your phone. 
Everyone always has their phone on them, and lots of people do carry around something like a USB charger or a wall charger, and that's good. But a backup battery is what I'm talking about. In a no power situation, having the ability to recharge your phone could be absolutely priceless. And like several other items, it's something that you can just toss in your EDC bag for those situations where you need some power and there's no charging stations to be found. A cheap 25,000 milliamp battery bank like this will recharge your cell phone probably four or five times, and since it has a USB port, you can do some other creative things with it, like plug in one of these USB LED lights. Sure, I wouldn't want to use this as a primary flashlight, but in a no power situation, this is a great thing to have, and, you know, you won't find yourself stuck in the dark. Number 10, and the last thing that I think you should always have on you is, at a minimum, a bottle or two of clean, fresh water. I never leave my house without at least one bottle, and especially if you live in a hot and humid environment like I do, you do not want to get stuck in a broke down car on the side of the road in August without something to drink. And while drinking water is the obvious first need, having a bottle of water can also be a lifesaver when it comes to things like wound care, including irrigating your eyes should something foreign get in them. There's almost no reason to not have a bottle of water with you. And of course, for the environmentally conscious amongst us, you can always get a reusable Nalgene bottle instead of disposable plastic bottles. So that's my list of 10 EDC items that I think you should have on you. If you're interested in any of these, I'll have Amazon links down below. Of course, this is through my affiliate account, and if you use those links to buy anything, I will get a small commission. So, thank you very much for the support. That said, obviously, some of these items are things that you would carry in your pocket, and some would be carried off-body, say in a backpack or a laptop case. But they're all things that I would tend to not leave the house without, if possible. Now, before closing this video out, let's check out some of the EDC pictures taken from the Just Bluefish Watch Club Facebook group that guys over there have have recently posted. All right, guys, that'll do it for today. Thanks to everyone that shared the EDC pictures on the Just Blue Fish Watch Club Facebook group. And of course, thanks to all of you guys for checking out today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you enjoyed it and you're not already a subscriber, please do subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any content in the future. With that said, I'll go ahead. I'll wrap this one up. I will sign off and say bye now.